it's Jacaro Toro here and this is now the second video about Australian Aboriginal religion and today I would like to start talking about the dreaming. This term comes from Frank Gillen. Frank Gillen was the postmaster at the Alice Springs a telegraph station towards the end of the 1800s and he had a deep fascination for the Aborigines, their languages, a way of life, a religions and so on. A, and he cooperated with Baldwin Spencer who was a, a biologist, an anthropologist and an ethnographer. Uh, at the University of Melbourne. So this dreaming is a translation of an Arunda uh, word, the language Arunda spelled like this or like this. And we have this word here, Algerenge. Now we should note however that while dreaming and the interpretation of dreams uh, is a religious practice spread out in different parts of Australia. Uh, precious few uh, Aboriginal tribes make a connection between the field of ancestral uh, precedent, which is what is in focus in Aboriginal religion, uh, and dreaming while being asleep. Uh, much more often this field of ancestral precedent is referred to as the law uh, in English. So the law governs uh, everything. It encompasses the laws of nature but also the rules and regulations by which uh, people are supposed to live. Uh, and it controls all that was uh, and all that will be. At least that's the idea of it. Uh, and the law is everywhere and binds everything together. Now, throughout uh, Australia, Aboriginal peoples tell stories about the creation of the world where ancestors created everything. The landscape, the plants, the animals, uh, heavenly bodies, uh, and people. These are ancestors with a capital A. Uh, they are essentially human. They have both good and bad traits. Uh, but they are also superhuman then, uh, since they created everything. Uh, and a connection is often made between ancestors, different ancestors, and various species of animals uh, and plants. So we could say that these are totemic uh, ancestors because there was totemism uh, in Australia, still is in some parts, uh, where I have been to study the languages in northwestern Western Australia. Totemism started to disappear already towards the end of the 1800s, which had to do with the fact that people didn't live as hunters and gatherers anymore. Uh, they had been enlisted as shepherders by their new white uh, masters uh, and they got their food from them. Anyway, uh, some Aboriginal tribes have a creator god which created the world in the beginning uh, as well as the ancestors and who has after that been absent. Uh, and this is of course 
something that Christian missionaries have latched onto, that this is the God we preach. However, other Aboriginal tribes do not have a creator God. So these ancestors were not created by anyone. They so sort of sprung up out of the earth uh, on their own. Uh, a little bit unclear to me exactly uh, how that was supposed to have happened. But anyway, these ancestors uh, are described as having walked around uh, and created uh, the landscape and everything in it then by singing it into existence. Uh, and that way they made it co-substantial with themselves. That's the idea. Uh, one idea is also that different groups of people, different tribes, were created uh, in different places by different ancestors. Hence, there is a threefold identification between ancestors, uh, places, the places where certain ancestors are uh, thought to have been, uh, and the people who are from there, which in turn meant that when the Australian Aborigines became citizens of their own country, uh, and many of them as a consequence lost touch with their ancestral lands, this was highly traumatic. Now, the idea is that the law should govern everything. The law, however, does not have anything to say about alcohol or modern drugs, because these, of course, did not exist in traditional times. And so when people lost touch with the places, many turned to alcohol uh, in the 1970s and later uh, other drugs have uh, come in as well, which has been highly disastrous. But this is another story. This could be one or more other videos. So I am not uh, going to say anything more about that here and now. I should mention that clusters of ancestor sites, sites that have ancestors, ancestor stories tied to them, uh, nearby sites is what we are talking about. These are called countries in Australian Aboriginal English. Uh, and people who come from there, they have the dreamings tied to the country. Uh, and the dreamings are expressed in stories uh, and in rituals. So in that sense, Australian Aboriginal uh, religion is very much land-based a term I mentioned in the previous video. Now, if you've made it this far, why not like this video and share it with someone you think might be interested in it? And consider subscribing. In my next video, I'm going to ask what is virtue in the Australian Aboriginal uh, context? And I'm also going to talk about Christian uh, influences on Aboriginal religions. But this is all for now. So, see you later.